In a world of drones, robots and shiny new tech, maintaining Sydney's most famous bridge still relies on careful planning and precise engineering. But it's essential to keeping the structure robust and as functional as the day it opened. This is how the Harbour Bridge has been kept alive for nearly a century. My name's Ray Daly, I'm a mechanical engineer and I'm the project engineer here at the Sydney Harbour Bridge. With the maintenance of a bridge, it really does take a human element to it. Technology is great from a distance, you can get your photos and stuff, but it's not really until you're up there touching the steel, taking your measurements, you might find that there is an issue. Engineers are tasked with keeping 52,800 tonnes of steel safe in one of the harshest marine environments in Australia. Every day, traffic loads and sea spray work the metal. Crews work hard to recoat the structure to stay ahead of corrosion. Ever since the bridge has been built, handed over to the public, we've never changed the need to have a constant workforce on site performing the works. It's just methodologies have improved back from when they used to scrapers and wire brushes, really sort of manual tools. We sort of progressed that onto pneumatic tools using needle guns or descalers, uh, rotary sanders, rotary wire brush. Certain areas we even perform blasting now, so abrasive blasting. The structure's original red lead is long gone. Today, crews cycle through a four coat protective system. On a live heritage structure, containment comes first, full enclosures to protect the harbour and the traffic then abrasive blasting. If you come in the next day and all that steel shot hasn't been vacuumed up or removed from every crevice, we found that the steel shot would then flash, it would sort of cake on really hard as soon as it got moisture into it. You sort of lead in to the potential more rust down the track. Started researching more into alternate blasting medium and we ended up settling on garnet, a crushed, crushed gemstone. You don't have the, any silica inside it, no contaminants. The fact that it's also pink it makes it very easy to see where it is when you're doing your clean up. Access is a real engineering puzzle. Under deck gantries crawl the belly of the bridge, letting crews build suspended scaffolds during shifts and move out of the shipping channel by knockoff. Older pneumatic units have been upgraded with electromechanical drives and motion control, keeping a 1930s design working to modern standards. Yeah, so access is our number one difficulty in today's safety standards. So gone are the days where engineers, tradesmen used to just wander out there, walk along over traffic, no harness, just the sky hooks. These days, so the use of EWPs, scaffold and suspended platforms. And drones? Well, not on a structure carrying trains and eight lanes of traffic. Flying over or near people and vehicles is restricted without special approvals. Welding is avoided where it could create new stresses. Plate and bolt reinforcements keep loads flowing safely. It's engineering judgment, not gadgets. So we're in preparation for the, the bridge's 100th birthday in uh, 2032. We've ramped up the painting efforts above, above road deck levels so on the main arch. So it's been one of the most challenging areas to get access to because you are above live traffic. Coming up with solutions that we can continue our works using safety netting, so there's no risk to the public. 90 plus years on, one of the country's most photographed structures survives because people show up, not with gadgets, but with planning windows, containment, careful blasting, and coats counted one by one. As the bridge's centenary in 2032 approaches, the lesson stays the same. Smart engineering isn't always doing something new. Sometimes it's about doing the right things, the right way, for a very long time. I think my kids tell me it's my bridge because I talk about it too much, but I couldn't, couldn't really imagine working anywhere else now that I've been here. So you, either, you either love the bridge or it makes you want to run for the hills, one of the two. <laughs>